Hey everyone, this is Ahsoka from Naja Woodworking, and a lot of you might not know this, but she's actually a pretty avid reader. And you see, back at our old apartment, we had this cheap little Amazon bookshelf where we had all of her books on display and nicely organized. But ever since my fiance and I bought our house, uh, Soka has been a little upset because we have this nice little library room, but we've yet to set up any type of bookshelves. So today what we're going to be doing is transforming that old little Amazon bookshelf into a sleek and elegant bookshelf for our new library room, and I think Ahsoka's going to like it. Alright, so Soka's pretty impatient. She wants these bookshelves up as quickly as possible. So I just got back from the lumber yard with some roasted poplar for this project. We got everything we need. Let's get building. All right, so the first thing we got to do for this build is basically mill down the boards we got from the lumber yard. So for this project, I decided to go with roasted poplar instead of walnut, strictly just to save some money. Now you're going to see where I chose to put these shelves later on in the video, but essentially I'm going to need them to be each eight feet long. So all I had the lumber yard do is uh, cut both boards to about a length of eight feet and two inches just to give me a little bit of wiggle room. And then I had them leave rough edges on the sides and everything like that and I figured I could do all of the jointing and planing on my own. I didn't need to do that, I could have let them handle it, but I was really looking forward to doing it for this build, namely because it was going to be my first time doing these things. So recently I was on OfferUp looking for jointers that I could have for the workshop here, and after scouring quite a few, I finally found this 6 inch Grizzly jointer, and uh, it was in, in perfect condition at a reasonable price, so I pulled the trigger, bought it for the shop, and I'm right now going to go ahead and run both boards through it on both sides to get it down to the right width, but also to give each board a nice flat uh, smooth edge. Now, the thing about this is I'm milling the lumber down, but not how you normally would if you were trying to get a perfectly square board and if you were doing some glue ups, but for this I'm not doing either of those things. I don't really need my boards to be perfectly square so long as they're good enough and that they both have the same profile so that one can be stacked on top of the other once we're ready to keep on going with these bookshelves. Now the other thing you'll notice is these boards are a little over 8 feet long, my jointer surface is not that long, so to try and prove the accuracy I have the roller that you see behind the jointer back there, and that's essentially another surface for the board to lie on so that I could do this properly. After running both boards through a couple of times I got it to the right width, and then I was ready to run both boards through the planer to get both sides nice and smooth. Now the width I ended up going with uh, for the purposes of these shelves came out to about nine and a quarter inch. Coming home from the lumber yard, the boards had a thickness of about three quarters and I'm gonna plane them down to just over half an inch. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be identical for both boards. So this was a really exciting project because not only was it the first time I got to use my jointer, it's also the first time I got to use my planer. And again, like I said, I'm not worried about perfectly square surfaces for these boards. The boards already came in very good shape. I mostly was just worried about smoothing out all of the sides and making them as close to the dimensions that I needed as possible. So I went ahead and continued planing until I got down to the right thickness, and then I was ready to begin some of the actual finer work on this project, but man, it was a lot of fun using these tools for the first time. Now what I need to do is, you'll notice I said the boards were 8 feet 2 inches. I had the lumber yard cut them to that length on purpose, just so I had a little bit, bit of wiggle room for errors. Uh, but now that I had the boards where I needed them to be, I went ahead and brought them over to the miter saw station, and I cut off that 2 inches from each one, so that both boards were 8 feet long. The wall that these shelves are going to go on is 10 feet long, and so I essentially wanted them to be centered on the wall with a foot on each side, and again you'll see all this at the end of the video for the final reveal. Now, earlier when I was talking about milling up the lumber, like I said, I don't really care that they're not perfectly square because I'm not gluing up anything here. I just need them to be nice and smooth on all four surfaces good enough to work with, but what's most important is I need these to be the same profile. 
So what I'm doing here is now that I've got them milled to the proper dimensions, I clamped one on top of the other, and they lined up very closely, but there's a couple instances where one might overhang the other and vice versa. So I clamped them together in the best position I could. I threw on some 80 grit sandpaper, upped the variable speed on my sander, and I basically just went around all four edges and sanded any loose overhangs from one board to the other so that once I was done, both boards lined up perfectly. And the reason this was important for this project is because these shelves are going to be one on top of the other, so I just need to make sure that they're exactly the same dimension and so that when one is stacked on top of the other, it kind of looks like they came together, if that makes sense. I just need them to have the same profile. So here's a little preview of what I just did. Now that my lumber's milled up, I just went around all four sides and got everything as close to even on all four sides as possible. Now, what's really important here is before moving on, I need to drill where my holes are gonna be. So the thing about these bookshelves is I'm transforming an older Amazon bookshelf that we used to have, and this was an industrial style bookshelf where the wood had holes going through it where you would feed some metal piping and then you would mount the metal piping to the wall. Now, the problem with those shelves they were really cool by design, but the wood being just a cheaper piece of Amazon furniture was basically, basically your cheap little particle board with a veneer over it. So when we moved houses, I decided to scrap the board because it was already falling apart, but I saved the metal. So I need these boards to be lined up perfectly so that the holes that I'm drilling go through both boards in the exact same spot because this is where the metal piping is gonna go that kind of brings the bookshelf all together. Now I figured this would be a good little stopping point to just let you know that if you ever want to help support Naja Woodworking and the shop here, feel free to become a patron. You get access to some pretty cool perks for a low monthly price and it really just helps me keep investing in the shop with lumber and all of the various tools and hardware that I need as I complete these projects. Now the next part is probably my favorite part of the build, and I wanted both of these shelves to not only have rounded edges, but to also have rounded corners. So in order for the rounded edges to be perfectly continuous, I wanted to first make my corners rounded, so that as I go over it all with the router, I can have one continuous cut. So a good little trick for this is I had a previously cut out circle from another project, and that circle happened to be the proper radius that I wanted for the corners of this shelf. So I took that little template circle, put it against each corner, and traced an outline, just like you see there. Once I had my outline, I took my jigsaw, and I basically cut the outline, not quite on the line, but as close to the line as I could. So I'm essentially just cutting away as much of that sharp corner as I can, just to get it to you know, approximately rounded. Now, you can choose whatever radius of curve you want. I could have used a water bottle cap, I could have used a quarter. Uh, it just so happened I had that circle, that circular piece lying around from the light capsule that we made a couple of weeks ago. And I looked at it and I thought, I already know this is a perfect circle. It has the right radius that I'm looking for for this, so let's go ahead and use that. So, I traced the outline on all four corners, did the jigsaw in all four corners, again, as close to the line as possible. And then I just took my hand sander and got it even more uh, directly to the line just to finish out that smooth rounded corner. So for this, because I'm shaving off quite a bit of material, again, I went with the 80 grit at a higher variable speed. And I'm basically just rounding that corner as best I can in a nice, slow and smooth fashion, not focusing on any particular point. Uh, but just going across continuously, getting it to that template line so that I finish with a nicely rounded corner. And again, obviously I'm going to do that for all four corners, but this really just kind of gives it a nice and sleek and elegant look, in my opinion. Anytime you can round over any type of a board, it just gives it a much nicer looking profile. And now that I have all four corners rounded out, I can go through the entire board with my router. So I equipped a roundover bit, and I'm gonna just go ahead and, this part took kind of a long time because it is an eight foot long board, but I rounded over every edge that the board has. So I rounded over the entire top edge, 
flipped the board over, rounded over the bottom edge, and then as you're about to see, I even rounded over the holes that I drilled for the metal piping to go through. I just, any chance I can get to round over an edge, that's a win in my book. And now I will say, when it comes to these three holes within the board itself, I only rounded over the edges, the inner edges that are gonna be on the top side of the board. I didn't bother doing the bottom side of the board because you're not going to even see that part of the shelf. But for the top, as you're gonna see at the end, it creates this really cool effect where it kind of looks like the metal piping is being sunk into the wood itself. But here you go. Now that we have our corners and our edges and even those inner edges all rounded over, I'm just giving a quick little preview of how beautiful these boards are looking from when I first bought them home from the lumber yard. Now we get to the favorite part of every woodworker's project, and that's the sanding. So I'm just gonna do my normal sanding technique here. Um, I'm gonna go over every surface, top, bottom, and all the sides. I'm starting with a 120 grit, and then I work my way up to a 150, and then finally finish with a 220. And I'm mostly just going to get every edge I can nice and smoothed over. Uh, with all of the rounded edges, I don't like to use my hand sander because I don't want to accidentally flatten out any of those rounded edges that I've been working on. So I also have this kind of uh, foam, foam malleable sandpaper at the same grits that I mentioned earlier. So I use that to go through all of the edges, all the rounded corners, everything like that. And then I just rolled up some sandpaper to feed it through the holes where the metal's gonna go to get those interior surfaces nice and smooth. Finally, the finish for this, I'm going with uh, what I've been going with on every project so far, and that's just my shellac. Um, I'm gonna cover the entire thing with just one coat of shellac. Um, I think that was enough for this. These don't need to be super heavily protected. And then this time, I decided to try something new. So instead of letting the shellac dry and going over the entire boards with a 220 or even a 300 grit, I saw something online that looked interesting and I decided to try it. So I let the shellac dry and then instead of sanding it off, I put a little bit of paste wax onto a very fine piece of steel wool and I basically rubbed that paste wax into both boards. I did it one time and it came out with this nice, very smooth and slightly glossy finish. It just looked a lot nicer than when I've tried sanding off shellac in the past. So it's definitely a technique I'm gonna carry forward in future projects. And now the shelves are ready to be installed. So I have Apollo here, you haven't seen him yet, but he is our lovely little cat. And he's going to oversee the installation of these shelves. So you see the little stairway wall here? It's 10 feet long. And that's exactly where these bookshelves are going to go. So let's show you how they turned out. Here you go, everybody. Uh, that's the metal piping that I referenced earlier. So that is the piping that came with the Amazon bookshelf, but I reconfigured it to fit the shelves that we made to design for this space. This library room ended up looking beautiful with these shelves. It's really kind of everything I was hoping the project would turn out to be. And now all that's left to do is load it up with our books, and this is going to be quite a cozy little library room. I was really happy with how this turned out. I think the boards just look so sleek and so elegant. The finishing technique really paid off. I was kind of nervous to try something new. I was kind of nervous with a lot of the stuff that took place in this project, because it was new to me, but I think it turned out well, and I think Apollo agrees. Now Apollo is only half the battle. We wanted to show these shelves to Ahsoka since it was all of her books that were going to be populating the shelves. So we went ahead and loaded it up with the books, got it nice and pretty looking. And you can see here Ahsoka is over the roof, excited to start reading, really happy with how this project turned out. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, she wasn't able to say so on camera, but I think she gives the project two paws up. Nice. All right, I wanna thank you all for watching this project come to life. I gotta say, I think I did a pretty good job with these shelves. They're meant to be the center of attention of our little library room here, and I'm pretty proud of the way they turned out. Now, there's gonna be a lot more builds to come on this channel, so I'd encourage you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below, and stay tuned for more. All right, 
I'll see you next time.